Hello everyone, Herpy1000 here, and today I'm going to show you how to install a minimal Debian SID um, install, uh, base install. Now you can we're going the you can get the Debian uh, business card ISO, which is around 20 to 50 megabytes from Debian.org slash CD slash net inst slash. Go for the business card. Anyways, let's open up this bad boy and take a look. Okay, no time at all. We're at the bootloader. Let's go to advanced options, expert install. Now, I know that some of y'all may not be Linux experts. I know I sure as heck ain't one, but it's pretty easy once you know how to get past the install. Okay, it asks us to choose a language. I'm English. You probably understand English too if you can understand me. Uh, I'm just going to select all the defaults here. That was just asking if I wanted to add any other local languages, which I don't. Okay, now it's going to ask us to select the keyboard layout. PC style keyboard. I uh, use American English. Now it's going to detect and mount the CD ROM. Modules load, USB storage, most hardware. For most hardware, you some PC MCIA hardware needs special resource configuration options in order to work. Um, uh, I'm just going to enter nothing here since I don't have to worry about that. CD-ROM detected. The CD-ROM auto detection was successful. And it found the ISO, so let's continue. Load and install components from the CD. Now, this... I don't really know much about this. I'm pretty sure that the, they have what that is about in the documentation, but I don't need any of that, so I'm just going to continue. I'll also show you how to... Uh, Okay, da da da. Let me pause this here. Okay, now it's going to to um to ask us to choose the next step in the process. Let's do detect network hardware. Now configure the network. Auto configure with network network with DHCP. My internet uses DH, DHCP. If the installer is unable to get a working configuration from a DHCP server on your network, you will be given the opportunity to configure your network manually after you attempt to configure it by DHCP. It will be able to do with me because I use DHCP. Hostname Debian. Let's make it um. Yeah, chicken butt. Let's do that. Domain name. This is... I don't have to worry about that. Now, choose a mirror of the Debian archive. HTTP for me, United States, FTP.US.Debian.org is good for me. Of course, it would be different if you had... If you didn't get it from, and let's see what all they got here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go with ftp.us.debian.org. Now, let's talk about HTTP proxies. I'm not hiding behind the proxy, so I don't have to worry about that. Now, it's going to ask us to choose a version of Debian to install. Squeeze, Wheezy, or Sid. Um, 
as I said, we're going to do Sid, so let's go with Sid. Now, set up users and passwords. Enable shadow passwords. Shadow passwords make your system more secure because nobody is able to view, to view them. To view even en encrypted passwords. The passwords are stored in a separate file that can only be read by special programs. I have no problem with shadow passwords, so I'm going to enable shadow passwords. If you choose not to allow root to log in, then the user accounts will be created and given the power to become root by using the sudo command. Uh, allow login as root? Sure. Now, root password. D yeah, I just typed in password. There we go. Create normal user. Yep. User. Yeah. Now, password. Configure the clock. Set the clock to NTP. Sure. Blah, blah, blah. I'm in Central Time because I live in Oklahoma as of this video. Detect disks. Now partition the disks. Using blah blah blah. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Guided. Use entire disk. This is a virtual machine, so let's do that. Yeah. All files in one partition. That's for new users. And I like keeping all my stuff in one place. A lot of people will say have a root partition, then home partition, and swap partition. I like swap partition, then root partition. But that's my personal taste. Okay, right changes to disks, yes. Then that stuff's gonna happen. Blah, 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 blah. Install the base system. Okay. I'm gonna let this run. I'm gonna pause this. Okay. The list shows the available kernels. Please choose one of them in order to make the system bootable for, to your hard drive. Shows all these kernels. You can choose a free BSD kernel. I'm going for 3.2.0-4-686 PAE. Because I'm like that. Anyways, now it's going to keep installing. Okay, now the primary function of the init rd is to allow the kernel to mount the root file system. It therefore needs to contain all drivers and support programs required to do that. A generic init RD is much larger than the targeted one. It may even be so large that some bootloaders are unable to load it. It has the advantage that it can be used to boot the target system on almost any hardware with similar target and it already is a very small chance that not all needed drivers are included. Drivers to include in the init RD. Let's go with generic, all available drivers. Then, it's almost done installing the base system. I'll pause it here. 
Okay, now, choose the next step in the install process. Let's configure the package manager. Some non-free software has been made to work with Debian, though this software is not at all part of Debian. Standard Debian tools can be used and installed it. This software has varying licenses which may prevent you from using, modifying, or sharing it. Please choose whether or not you want to have it available anyway. Use non-free software. Excuse me, use non-free software? Yes. That's going to configure at. Okay, now we get to select and install our software. So let's do that. And I'm currently sucking on a sucker. That's rude. I shouldn't do that. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll put that there. Okay, I'll pause it here. Okay. Some packages were found to be useful with your hardware. Please select those if you want to install. VirtualBox OSC Guest X11. Sure. Um, continue. Dan is going to do some stuff. Yeah, I'll pause it here again. Okay, it's been running for a little while, installing stuff, and it says, The system may anonymously supply the distribution developers with statistics about the most used packages on this system. Hey, we have bread. But, yeah, um, I would recommend you taking the thing so to help the developers out. Have them know which stuff to put in their next release, you know, stuff like that. But I already took it, so um, I'm just going to click no to that. But really, the choice is up to you. Okay. The man and man be be installed. The the man and man. DB program can be installed with the set user ID bit set so that they will run with the permissions of the main user. This, allowed or, this allows ordinary users to benefit from the catching and pre-formatted manuals which may aid performance on slower machines. I recommend installing this. Okay, here's the important bit. Um, we're going to unselect that, unselect print server, unselect that. I'm going to leave the standard system utilities in because I'm just going to because I feel like it. It'll still be a bare bones install. going to use this, I'm going to install Awesome on this thing and use it as, you know, tips and tricks on Awesome. Actually, that sounds like a lot of work. Now, I'll just put Razor QT on it just to be different. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to pause it here. Okay, the install is almost finished and this should be like the final thing before we can reboot into our 
basically terminal. <laughs> like I said, base, bare bones, install. <coughs> oh, now we got installed the bootloader. So. It's loading. It's loading. There we go. It's going to be installing Grub. I like Grub, Grub too. I know that they have others like Lilo, but I've always used Grub. Um, install Grub to the master boot record, always. That's where bootloaders should always be installed on. The master boot record. Okay, now let's finish up this installation. System clocks are generally set to coordinate universal time. I like coordinate universal time, so I'm going to stick with that. Installation complete. Continue. Now, just to prove how complete the installation is, there we go. Let's log in. Load and all the appropriate stuff. Chicken butt, log in. There we go. Now, next time we'll I'll show you how to install stuff that you most likely need. How to install and configure Alsa, Pulse Audio. Xorg, and we'll get a graphical user desktop up there. Till next time, ciao.